What's up, everybody? Chuck Bailey with the Base Channel here, and another episode of Take Five. Yes, all the things that involve five strings. And today we're talking about the Harley Benton PJ5 SBK Deluxe. Let's check it out. So just like the last episode you saw on Take 5, um, I took this bass a little different of a direction with Chris. We bounced some ideas off it. It's actually a great idea on Chris's end. And uh, I've had some more gigs come up recently where we could see how this bass sounds. Maybe not necessarily with the kind of music you play, but how it would sound in a live mix. You gotta keep separated. Now, I took it out on this gig, and I already mentioned that, and we I, I played it, and it was, it was good. I had some tonal issues, I guess you could say, um, on the presentation from the PJ setup, that it was just kind of here, right? Like, I feel like as an instrument, you become more acquainted with it starts kind of here because that's where your expectations are and then as you start gravitating towards understanding the nuances of that your likeness the applicability the use of it everything kind of climbs it ascends right i felt like with this bass i stayed kind of here and then i had some moments where i came up and then some moments where it came down and i just it just kind of averaged out here I, I don't think that's bad. Let me let me preface this explanation by saying I'm not saying it's bad. I'm saying that it wasn't, there wasn't a tremendous amount of wow factor and maybe I was kind of upselling it myself thinking that I was like, you know, wow, $118 bass, you know, how, not to sound like a jerk, but how bad can it be? It wasn't bad at all. It wasn't bad at all. It's it, like, again, I, I saw it seven, seven and a half, for the whole gig, but I had spots where I was kind of five, right? And, you know, I don't know what they're using for the components for the magnets. I'm not gonna bill nigh this. I think that, again, like I've mentioned in other videos, this stuff has to be um, fair to yourself as far as how it feels. The sound, like I've mentioned, can change that, right? It has that reverse P thing going, which would make it a little harder because the shape, the shell of that P pickup in that is a little harder to match if you were gonna change that. So keep that in mind if your intentions are to mod it. There are some companies that make those shell sizes a little more available. I believe Seymour Duncan does, um, but I don't know of any others. So if you are buying this, and again, totally good, um, look towards companies like that if you're looking to replace the pickups, right? <laughs> There was a lot of pros and cons. I'm gonna narrow it down because I think these are the most important. You know, first of all, we use our eyes first for anything, right? And aesthetically, this base is badass. I love the matte black finish. It looks so cool with the torque pick guard. Um, it was great, uh, aesthetically, right? And and then the neck, right? Like I, I've, we've mentioned that a couple times, right? Like it has to be comfortable. You have to want to play. There's there's nothing that's gonna, it could be the most expensive bass in the world. If it's not comfortable to play or you don't like the way it feels, you're not gonna play it, right? This bass felt great. And it stayed in tune. It's super important, especially if you're doing weird tunings because your singer's have trouble hitting the original keys and stuff. I know a lot of the stuff I do is half step or or whatnot and 
this bass held that great out the gate. I didn't put new strings. I didn't do anything to this. I pulled it out of the bag and took it to the gig. So what you hear is just how it would sound if it came to you. My history with PJs is a little convoluted, and that's why I want to be fair. Uh, I had an MTD in the past that was a PJ system, and I've heard a lot of people make them sound great, right? Like, I, I have a weird thing with basses like that, where like, I don't like Warwick basses at all. I get picked on because Chris is a big Warwick fan, Josh and all them, but like, I, I don't like the way they sound when I'm playing them. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, but there are certain basses that when I play them, I hate them, but I like when other people play them because they make them sound good. And you know, that's just a character thing, that's a nuance thing, that's a touch, that's a feel thing, an experience thing, whatever you want to call it. It's just not me, right? And a lot of times, four string PJs, like the Bandito, that's my other bass we talked about in the past uh, on this channel, I love that bass. I love that bass. It was my go-to gig bass when I was touring for 20 some odd years ago. I, and I, I beat the hell out of it, and it consistently, sonically delivered, and it felt great. For whatever reason, five-string PJs do not sit with me well. And that's why I want to be completely fair. I want to be unbiased as possible. I am kind of gun-shy when it comes to five-string PJs. I love the four-string versions. But for whatever reason, I always feel like there's a sacrifice for the low end of five string PJs because you have the ver versatility of a P pickup and a J pickup. I've heard it explained where you don't get the best of both worlds, you get the average of both worlds and that kind of cancels it to an extent with some players and some tones that you're trying to get because the P pickup has its its famed history of what a P pickup is supposed to sound like just like a J pickup has an expectation from bass players on what an ideal J pickup should sound like, whether it's in bridge or neck position and vice versa. For PJs, the J is almost always in the bridge position, right? And the P's in the sweet spot are close to. base for what it for what it is and what what the cost is on this hands down it's good it's it's good it's good is it something that I would always reach for on a gig if I had other options no not necessarily that's not a bad thing I like variety I love my MTDs I like sires I like fenders I like a lot of bases anaconda makes a great base Michael Kelly makes a great base there's a lot of options this bass is just one of those things that it just didn't hit with me. Maybe one of the other guys in the channel are going to check it out and they're going to be like, this is what I've been looking for. And that's totally fine, right? We're not all going to like the same stuff and uh, no harm, no foul. It's nothing against the company. It just didn't, it didn't deliver what I needed, right, for the gig. It did the job, totally did the job and did it fine. But it was just those moments when you get out of body experience and you're playing you're like yeah i like that yeah that sounded good yeah i dug that the feeling of it as far as ergonomics and comfort of playing solid solid it's just a sonic thing and that's why i'm in that weird position because of the odd shape for the shell and finding another company i don't have a ton of experience with the seymour duncan stuff so i don't know if i'd find something that i would like <laughs>
bases are fantastic for their price and they are their four string models especially um, from what I've been able to ascertain have great mod platform potential because those sizes for those shells are a little more in line with a multiple companies and what they make it's just this one is kind of harder to find so check it out for yourself let me know in the comments how you thought it sounded I would love the feedback and I'm sure I'm sure Harley Benton and Tomon Music would love the feedback too they're really hands-on with a lot of the models and accessibility that I've seen that they make available for musicians and I love that I that, that just means they're paying attention to their demographic we're being heard finally no more injustice for all we're being heard so thank you Thank you guys for checking this video out. Thank you, Harley Benton and Timon Music, for the opportunity to work together. We appreciate you. Check us out on the other videos that are coming out. Like, comment, subscribe, dislike, doesn't matter anymore. We're all participation trophies at this point. You can be a YouTube member, though, and you can get access to exclusive content for the channel. It's very cheap. Check it out. All that stuff's going to be in this video and other videos to come. But until then, thank you for checking out Take 5. Thank you for checking out this PJ5 Deluxe from Harley Benton. And we will see you next time. Just